So part of, of what we, we've had to learn is, is not just how to make very, how to fabricate these devices at small scale, how to make small scale turbines, how to make small scale compressors, and how the, 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 the physics affects what those designs should be, uh, but we've also had to learn how do you spin things that, that quickly and how do we support them. So we have a large program working on micro scale rotor dynamics and micro scale bearings. Uh, we have a, had a large number of students who have worked on developing micro scale turbo machinery, the, the compressors and the turbines. Um, we've also ha had several students work on micro scale combustion. So at, at the small scale, uh, because we, we're concerned about if we have enough time to react all of our fuel over to product, and our product is going to be water and, and carbon dioxide for the most part, um, our combustor dominates the size of the engine. Um, so as I said before, our rotor diameter is about 8 millimeters. So if you look at this device here, the rotor would fit in this little circle in the center. Uh, but you can see this large C-shaped chamber around it, and that's our combustor. So we build a combustor around the rotor, um, and we, we stack up, and we get volume by stacking up a number of wafers, and we have a, a significant volume in there, and that's the size that, that we've built in, as large as we can fit within here to get our, our combustor volume. What you see here is a picture of a microscale combustor burning hydrogen. Uh, and this combustor is similar in scale to the combustor I showed uh, in the previous picture. And you can see that we're successfully burning the hydrogen. Uh, now hydrogen is, is a great fuel um, for burning. Uh, it's very easy fuel to burn. And, and thus we always start that way with all our new devices. Um, but hydrogen is not the best fuel to focus on uh, for these sorts of applications because it's a very difficult fuel to, to carry. It's got a relatively low density. So, so hydrogen is a, a difficult fuel for, for transporting. Um, you, don't, you need a large volume or, or mass, um, massive system to, to transport it. You don't get the full energy density benefit out of it. Whereas a hydrocarbon, as we know from, from lighters, um, you just need a very small plastic package to carry on the fuel such as butane. Um, and that's the route we'd like to take. But a hydrocarbon fuel is much more difficult um, to, to burn. Um, it, it's not as happy at the smaller scale, uh, but we've invested a lot of effort and we've had several students who have worked on it and have demonstrated that you can burn uh, hydrocarbon. And we, we've now demonstrated both propane uh, as well as we've actually demonstrated JP8 operating at, at this scale. So this is the lab where I work with our students on testing the devices. This lab is a semi-clean room. It's cleaner than, than an ordinary lab would be, but, but you see we're not wearing bunny suits as you might expect to see people wearing in a normal uh, fabrication facility where these devices are made. Uh, now why do we need all this equipment for testing it? Well the actual device uh, operating in the end would not necessarily need all of this but being scientists and engineers we like to, to monitor uh, our flows and our pressures inside the device so we can really understand what's happening in each part of the engine to be sure it's meeting our, our specifications. Uh, so in this rack we have a, a whole variety of mass flow meters and controllers uh, and pressure sensors which are all controlled and fed back into our computer so we can run the engine both with the computer as well as manipulating some, some valves and, and dials. So I mentioned the wafers, the, the, as I mentioned the device is fabricated on separate wafers which we then stack up and bond together. That's all done at the wafer level and we'll then dice apart the different engines once it's all bonded together. Um, what I'm showing here, we actually did not bond it, so I can show you the individual lafer, uh, levels a lot laid out. Uh, so you have individual die levels. This is a turbocharger device, uh, a device where we were studying um, both the compressor, a turbine, a combined spinning at high speed, so, so the bearings as well. And it's a six-level device. You can see components from six different wafers as well as the rotors located uh, in the center. So what happens next? We've demonstrated all the different components. Uh, we've shown that we have the fabrication technology and developed th that that wasn't there already. So we know we can make the device. Uh, it's a question of integration. Can we integrate all the different parts together uh, to make an engine which can produce this net power, hopefully up to upwards of about 10 watts of power. Uh, and that's where we're really focusing our effort right now. Um, and it gets that much harder when you try to tie all these different things together. Uh, it's a very complex and difficult thing to do. Um, but we've got quite a bit of hope that that will be there in the next few years. We've come to the end of another show. I hope you found it helpful, informative, and somewhat inspirational. From the MIT campus here in Cambridge, Massachusetts, I'm John Wilson.